Okay. Am I supposed to call Jaura. later? Jaura. Ha. Ha. Let's see. Oh, awesome. Now those are going to disappear. Let's see. Bondo. Bondo. It's closed. Ha. Little. What the f*** are you doing? I'm <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>2020 film. It is a 2020 film. Uh, but it just dropped on OTT platforms. Um, so it's been, it was, been, I believe, in the festival circuit for most of last year. Um, but it's a Malayalam film called Briami. Uh, it's on, and if you haven't seen it, it's on the uh, OTT platform Cave, I believe is the name of it. Um, but it's uh, da -da 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 -da, directed and written by... Um, Sajin Babu. And then starring, uh, let's just, uh, it's, I believe that's her. Uh, Kani Kaskruti, who's the, the main lead. The there's, lead. There's some others. Yeah, but, but obviously she is the her film. Yeah, this is the main, uh, uh, she's the main part of this film. Um, I struggle with how I want to do this. Uh, because obviously it's a new film. But, uh, there's, there's a bunch of stuff going on in this film. And so... <laughs> We should, we should treat it like it's just a released film that people are going to watch. And so we're going to do the first half without spoilers and then do spoilers next. Okay, okay. let's do a short, short yeah. little non-spoiler review. At the front. And once again, it's on the, the OTG Vlog from Cave. It's about, it's about 90 minutes. Um, but uh, I, I, I'd give two preferences. If you, if you like escapism, don't watch it. If you are a fan of censorship, <laughs> this will make you very upset. <laughs> Those are the two prefaces I, I give it. Just both the, it, the film and probably what we're going to talk about right now. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, those are the two main things. If, if you're if any of those things, don't watch it. You're, you're, you're absolutely going to hate it. Uh, Rick, your uh, initial non-spoiler. Non-spoiler thoughts. We'll so give a, couple, a little bit a little bit of non-spoiler, and then we'll get into the meat. A couple things. It was better than the trailer, and I thought the trailer was fantastic, and I was excited to see it because uh -huh. of the trailer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, number two. Please, somebody like Anyarag or another person in a position of clout who has connectivity to OTT platforms that are more prevalently readily available, uh -huh. like Netflix or Amazon, please get this more visibly available. Uh -huh. And three, I, I know why it wasn't, but this should have been your Oscar submission, India. So... Uh, yeah, so I, I really enjoyed it as well. Well, actually, I, I hesitate to use that word. <laughs> this is one of the ones, it's one of those films, I don't know if you can enjoy, you can appreciate the hell out of it. But yeah. it's it's kind of like Schindler's List. Right. You can't enjoy Schindler's no, List. No. You can appreciate it for the art that it is and the fact that it goes so intense. And it's so well made. This film made me uncomfortable. I can't tell you how many films have actually ever done that. It's, it's very rare to make me uncomfortable in a film. <laughs> and it did it. Yeah. Oh boy, did it do it. Uh, so yeah, so I'd say if you haven't seen it already, just that I don't want to give anything else away. Just go watch it. It's on okay. Cave. It's and about, that, I think, $1.99. And you need to know something before you watch it. And please go out of your way to watch it. It deserves the support. It deserves to be spread around for people to see. To see because it's an important story. It is, for, for, in my opinion, the quintessential example of what cinema is supposed to be about, and I'll explain a little bit more about that in a second and why my particular viewpoint about film is the way that it is. And do not have kids anywhere in the room. Ooh. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> this is this is a film for mature people. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of adults who aren't mature enough to watch this. Oh yeah, 100%. so you need to be very mature, and you need to be very uh, okay with real life being depicted graphically yes. on very, screen. Very graphic at every turn. It pulls zero punches. No punches. Literally none. After basically, it, it's how it starts. So basically, how this film starts is how the rest of the film kind of remains. Yeah, and it is, and I meant that. When, I, I know why, but I don't know why. And until, hmm, until the people who make the choices about what gets submitted are willing to submit a film like this, and I don't know that that's going to happen anytime soon. Oh, no. Um, this is the kind of film that needs to be submitted to the Oscars. Uh, yeah, the um, Oscars would love this film. The, this, for me, I saw all of the nominated films for the international category and then some this year. I saw films that weren't even, they didn't even make it to the Oscars. They were just part of the conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, my favorite international film is still The Man Who Sold His Skin. Mm. But this had a shot mm. of beating that. Yeah. And I would have been rooting for this yeah. uh, uh, above The Man Who Sold His Skin. Because this film, and we'll talk about her in a minute, uh, but she did. Yeah. It is. It is. It is an important film, and for me, like everybody in Hollywood who was jumping up and down and screaming about promising young woman, this is your promising young woman right here. Oh jeez. This. This. For. I mean, if you want a film that talks about the way women. Are treated universally by men not not just India not just in the world of Islam not just anywhere in the particular but historically what is wrong with the world with the way men treat women and the issues women have to face over and over again and no matter how much they say something about it men continue to treat them the way they treat them uh, it's an important film I think so in, in, in a different way than say like whereas we loved parched and hell for that reason mm -hmm. Parched and Hellerau are kind of like, and I don't mean to demean them because they're great films, but they're very innocent oh, compared I mean, to in, this. Definitely in comparison. Yeah. And, and they both have their place, and I'm, I don't love those any less. No, I actually no. probably love those more because I could watch both of those uh, way more. Those are way more watchable, but if I wanted someone to be impacted in a way, when you, le when you see a film that sticks with you and you think about it for days because it was so... So gut wrenchingly true. Mm -hmm. That's this. So once again, go watch it. It's very short. Uh, hour ninety. Uh, <laughs> sometimes it, it might feel a little longer because you will be very uncomfortable. It was really, really smart to make it that that short. Um, I have but, so much to say about uh, this Allen film. Go creator, watch it. This director. Spoilers from here on out. Yeah, we're <laughs> gonna spoil from now. So if, if you want to get spoiled or you've seen it from here on out, we're talking about content. Uh, I want to talk about her. I love her. I want to see so much more of her. And I think we have seen her before, uh, but we didn't know it. No. Okay. She's in OK Computer, which we haven't seen yet. The series with uh, Vijay Varma and uh, Radhika Apte. Uh, she's in Cocktail uh, and other stuff. But I would love to see more of her. She reminds me of uh, Tilotama a lot, right? Yes. Uh, in the terms of uh, how raw she is in, in her acting. Uh, she, she doesn't do any indicating. She oh, my stars. She, no. Yeah, she's just... She used her like numbness so well in this character. She, this character was so numb to uh, to everything going on because of what she's been through. Uh, and then it's also a, a huge story of sexual awakening, of actually finding out what pleasure <laughs> actually is, and then also dealing with a bunch of awful stuff, motherhood, that child leaving, and then we'll talk about the end uh, in just a minute. But I loved her. She is one, one of the <laughs> She's one of the reasons this film is so amazing, is because of her performance. Absolutely, she does a great job. She she carries it even more than Radhika carries Parched. Mm. I man, I hope you're watching and you can hear us talk about your work because I described it to Andrani as. Did she watch? Not, no, she didn't. But she, she's going to. Yeah. <laughs> She'll love this film. Yeah. Uh, and uh, your performance, your work in this. Aside from being impeccable, just from an acting standpoint, but the other level of it, you did what the most celebrated performances in Oscar history, or just the conversations that happen when you point to a role and you go, that right there is what it means to be an actor. 
it was the way I can best describe your work in this is that you were beautifully soul bearing. Mm -hmm. um, I felt that you shared with us the most personal places of yourself in the portray, and it, that, that's the way this role has. If you don't do that, if you're not willing to go all in on this role, don't take this role. Mm. But not a lot of actors can do this. Radhika could, do, Radhika oh, yeah. Apte could do this. Yeah, yeah. because I'm it, sure it's, Tilatama could too. Tilatama could do it. Too. It's yeah. it's a very requiring role in terms of how vulnerable you have to be. Being as vulnerable as you you are, just I you mean, really you really have to strip yourself down to I mean, essentially one of the messages of the film: being a piece of meat. Yeah. Yeah, which is a very awful place to have to take yourself. But yeah. you have to be able to go to that place. And this is unlike, I, the first 10 minutes of this film, you instantly know, okay, we're not in Kansas anymore. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've seen, no Indian film I've seen on OTT platforms or anywhere else is as just raw. The right at the, right think, at the get -go. I think I was told Netflix and Amazon were afraid to pick this one up. Well, I'll grow some balls. Yeah. And actually... Let me use a better term, get a vagina. <laughs> uh, because, and I, and I mean that, and this is serious, Betty White made a joke about that. She's like, I don't know why they use balls as the, the quintessential example of like being brave and strong because if they're so, you, you just the slightest flick and you knock the guy out, whereas a vagina's take a beating yeah. throughout life. Uh, uh, you, you, I understand from the little that's out there to read about it, I understand that cinemas in India uh, a lot of cinemas were refusing to put this in their theaters. Uh, that I understand. I don't agree with it. Yeah. But for Amazon and Netflix to not pick it up, come on, guys. Yeah. I mean, seriously, uh, you you have enough stuff on there that like the only reason you wouldn't do that is because you're being cowards. Yeah. So put this on your platform. Basically, the first what I'd say 15 minutes, they smack you in the face. Yep. Uh, a bunch of times. With both what you see yeah. and why you're seeing yeah. it. Uh, so obviously it opens with the credits, but all you hear is the sound of sex. Uh, Which at first you don't really, you're thinking, uh, uh, is this food being made? Or, yeah. Or is it? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and so that's how it starts. But obviously it opens on her and he's just using her basically as a piece of meat. It's, yep. it's, not, it's not something out of love. No. It's basically something she's like, I'll get beat if I don't. Yeah, he clearly is only in it for one thing, for, for himself. For one thing, he just gets up right after he's done. Yep. And then she tries to pleasure herself. He gets mad at her for uh, doing that. <laughs> and says a line that is, many of you may know this if you don't know this, but he says to her when he gets up, he says, they obviously didn't cut your clitoris mm. well enough. Uh, and that's legitimate. There are in certain areas that practice Sharia law, yeah. Islam, yeah. it's called female circumcision, where they purposefully mutilate the woman's clitoris so that she cannot feel pleasure during sex. Yeah, um, yeah it's awful. But then after that, <laughs> you get one of the most uncomfortable scenes I've ever seen is a, a circumcision. Uh, that was unbelievable. Oh my God. Because I, at least, I I'm so assuming you've seen it. If you haven't seen it, you're gonna watch your kid get circumcised. I think it was real. I promise that was real. Just like the goat was, which yeah, that you can't do in American cinema. No, they literally kill the goat. You, yeah, you watch camera. the goat get his throat they slit with blood spattering everywhere. Inseminate a cow. Mm -hmm. You see a guy sticking his hand up the, the cow's yeah. ass. That yeah, that wasn't a shock. No, to no, me. it's just this is the first few minutes. The circumcision part. I'm like, dang, they actually got a kid who it was time to circumcise and filmed it. And then when they did the goat, I was like, okay, it didn't it didn't bother me because I. I have hunted and I yeah. have killed animals where I've cleaned them. Yeah. And I know that's what happens when you kill goats. It's and, just seeing right? that. It's just, that's not the, you know, when they say in films, no animals were harmed in the making of this film. I don't think that can this be This doesn't said qualify here. for this film. No, uh, at all. Um, so that's basically, I believe, the first 15 minutes. Those four things, if not a couple more that I'm forgetting, just right off the bat. And so you're like... This is this is what we're in for, right? Yeah, now. yeah, and, and it and that continues, and it takes you on the ride of not just the, the experience that can happen because the story itself is a very real story that mm -hmm. happens all over the place. Where not only the way women are treated, but what can happen when you have guilt by association simply because you are either a Muslim, mm -hmm. or in her situation, you actually have a family member, because yeah. this happens. Where especially if you live anywhere near or in the Middle East 
port like this section of India that has a predominant number of people that can easily get to the Middle East, yeah. that you find out a family member has been recruited and is a part of some terrorist organization, like this guy was, her, their brother her, was in ISIS. Yep. Uh, and then the guilt by association. But the larger picture isn't that, even though that's part of it. The larger picture is obviously, uh, it was it was more for me than just the way women are treated, which mm -hmm. is important. It was <laughs> how many of the world's evils can you point to, past, present, and future, that you can summarize in one word, men. And religion. Led by? Men. Yeah. yeah, because the global world religions mm -hmm. and the precepts of them were created by and are driven by this is all. There's one once again men. There's not just talking about this Islam. No uh, one. This is all of them. Every single one. Correct. <laughs> driven by men. the teachings and the doctrines and the leaders are men. Yeah, and so, and the way that they treat the women is. I want to talk about some of the other ones too. I thought the mom did a super her job she did I, I really enjoyed her performance I did too uh, I thought she she was incredibly on um, I thought the the guy that she ended up having a very unique relationship the, 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 the kind the man kind man with the the, the uh, yeah. goatee I don't know his character but that's yeah. how I would refer to him in the film would be the I kind man he did really good and I thought it was extremely I loved the filming and hats off to the actor who played the character that there's a moment if you've seen the film you know what it is where she looks in to see if he's there and she catches him masturbating mm -hmm. and the actor laid there and was masturbating on camera for us once again another like you just don't see these things usually no so it's 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 quite shocking and i think a lot of it was obviously it was of course on purpose but it was uh, to send a message i believe one of the overall messages Absolutely. about basically women and a bunch of stuff is just our meat yeah, yeah, that's a big man. I mean, even on the circumcision part, you yeah. can't really see it. Like, it's, it's just, a, they're cutting a bunch of meat. It's mm -hmm. basically what it looks like. And then you obviously kill the goat. And then so there, there's a big, that huge message. Obviously, the bigger message is just all these men look at this woman as a piece of meat. The, the cops, the, the, the husband, the, just this random guy, this. And she returns the favor yeah. by giving them what they consider it to be just a piece of meat. Which is extremely. Did you see that coming? Yes. Me too. Uh, which I, I'm, I'm a little upset because I, I I don't think they need to call it. I think it's called brownie, the taste of flesh, or something like that. Uh, the flavors of flesh. Yeah. I think you could take that part out. Yeah. Just call it brownie. Just call it brownie. I think that gives too much away. Uh, because I was looking for. I was like, we haven't gotten to brownie yet, so this is probably the logical step that we're going here. And it's 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 incredibly shocking. Uh, <laughs> I knew uh, <laughs> to, to that it that it would happen that they would show that. I thought she was actually like I was like I was like is she gonna cut up this thing and put it in the? Thing? I actually thought I thought when we were getting to that, I thought this director might do that. Oh, yeah, so did I. That's why I was I was like oh my. And God. I love that I was yeah. that I was afraid of that. I uh, thought this director might and it was a everything that he did. Um, yeah, you're a phenomenal director and cinematographer. What an absolutely every choice you made as a director. The the choice, for example, to force we didn't get a directors. I love this about the world of directing, and it's one of the things I hate because some directors force you to see stuff that you didn't need to be forced. Yeah. This movie, he forces you to see things that you ought to be forced to look at because the whole basic message of this film is how long are we as a collective humanity going to turn our eyes away from the stuff that is, I don't even have enough words to describe how horrible they are for the treatment of other people. Yep. And he forces you to look at them in a way that if all you will walk away from the film is, oh, he shows a guy masturbating, you, you, miss the for point. Just, you don't understand art yeah. or the point of art. Yeah. You just completely miss the point. I, I, really, uh, I really enjoyed the, the end of it when obviously oh. she... she she obviously feeds these uh, this to these people, and which I love because that's the only thing she felt like she could get back at them with. But and even still, her sense of dignity, her sen she doesn't include the crap. Yeah, which I was. I thought she was gonna do it, and I was like, "Go, girl!" Yeah, absolutely. And when she didn't, I was like, "Even still, the goodness in her heart is still there." Yeah, yeah. like I because it's the entire message of obviously. 
she this is the only way she felt like she could either get revenge, get justice, get whatever, get back at them. I think I think even because when you understand some of the things about what the Quran teaches about cannibalism, mm -hmm. uh, I think she was probably hoping she could somehow inadvertently get these guys to commit a sin <laughs> that Absolutely. they didn't know about and therefore didn't confess. Therefore, when they died, they would have unconfessed sin. Yeah. But that's, and that's then, not how it works. In the Quran, you have to be conscious of the sin. But I love that he left it open with questions because obviously right at that, the, the good man with the, the goatee, he said, does one wrong make a... Does another wrong make... I forget the exact line, but yeah. two wrongs don't make a right, basically, is essentially what he says. Right. And he's very upset by it. And then you see her jump off the bridge, right? Right. And it sounds like she's drowning. Right. And so then the, but the very next scene... Is her, I believe, with her ex-husband. It's her and the ex-husband. But now she's on top. And so she either, so I, I've, I've, my theory was that she kind of, she because she told herself in the beginning of the, of the movie that she wasn't brave enough to kill herself. Um, and so I thought she was like, I'm just going to live my life and I'm going to take control of it now. And obviously her being on top, uh, which for all the people who don't let their wives do this, you're missing out. Uh, <laughs> Amen, brother. <laughs> but uh, the fact she's taking control of it, but somebody else I, I saw put said um, that she might have died, and this was her heaven. Was that because it's like Hey gets seventy four virgins, right? Uh, when he goes to heaven, and there's nothing for women. Yeah, this was her heaven that yeah. she got to take. I don't know which one it is. I like that it left it open to for interpretation because you don't really know. Yeah, because you're kind of confused. You're like, it sounds like she drowned just now. And you can walk away with either interpretation and be, let that be the ending, uh, which is kind of like many films. The one that comes off the top of my head is the three uh, billboards. In, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That where do they do it or do they not do it? Yep. And either ending is right. I personally go for, based on everything else we had seen, uh, that she does die and that this is her last thought. Mm. Uh, that the only way she could find any sense of justice in the world mm. was in her imagination. Because yeah. in the real world, women just are meat and die. Yeah. And I, I was saying earlier about this being the quintessential example of what filmmaking is and it, my favorite kinds of films is because I'm very, everything about me is purpose driven. I believe that if you want to know what your purpose is, it's very simple. Look at the design. I'm not going to pontificate long about it, but design reveals purpose. I've said this over and over again. I've taught this, that uh, this chair I'm sitting in, all you have to do is look at it. You know what its purpose is. It was made to be sat in. Now you can use it outside of its intended design, but the farther you get away from its intended design, the more likely you are to be hurt yourself or hurt somebody else. Mm. So whenever something is used within its highest purpose, which is revealed by its design, you're going to derive the greatest blessing from it. There is a design to theater, which is film in movie theaters. All theater is storytelling. And the purpose of it is encapsulated in Shakespeare's line in Hamlet where he says, the play's the thing wherein I'll catch the conscience of the king. Storytelling at its core is conscience, conscience catching. It's intended to have a moral to the story so that when you leave, the story didn't just entertain you and stir your imagination, but you left with a message that taught you a moral lesson that made you a better person for having heard it when it's all said and done. And I cannot think of a more powerfully and well-depicted way to tell a story that has a message that ought to reshape not just the way you think, but the way that you behave. Yeah. And sadly, like us, or uh, his other one, um, uh, Jordan Peele. Oh, um, um, Get Out. Get Out. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember especially us, yeah. we all left the theater and looked at each other and said, the people who need to see that film and understand it never will and never will understand it. Mm -hmm. That's the sad thing about this is that the people who need to see this film and it touches everything from the way women are treated to the way I loved these news clips. Yeah. Just in your face about the issues that are real and the real problems that it's like Libya, man. I, and it's like the genocide in Africa. There have been these constant humanitarian crises that, and Hopefully we won't be saying this about COVID in India, even though it's yeah. shaping up to be that right now, yeah. where 
a bunch of places in the world. I remember in the, the first 10 years of Libya, looking around and going, uh, anybody care about what's going on over there right now? Yeah. <laughs> The, 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 the famines in Africa that are politically created and g literal genocide going on in Africa and the rest of the world's just I feel like that's the other message of this film in the end is that how many stories like this happen and just women all around just are abused, left for dead and everyone else just goes on their merry way. Yep. Yeah, it's an incredible film. Very powerful film. Incredible um, film. So once again, hope you're not here if you haven't seen it. Uh, and if you have, let us know your thoughts on the film, uh, what you think the ending was, what the, basically, because this film has a lot to say, uh, and there's a lot of stuff you can take from this film, and which is another brilliant thing that the director did. So I want to thank all the creators of the film you did uh, for making such a, a great film and bringing it to our attention, you guys. Oh, um, because this thank is, you, I know this is a very small, small film. Um, <laughs> very independent film. I'd be shocked if the budget was... <laughs> I'm glad you said this because yeah. I thought about this when I was talking to Indrani about it. This film is, the, is another, it's a great example of, we talk about this all the time, the measure of great movie making is not box office or popularity. Mm -hmm. no. In the same way, great artists are not defined by how well known they are. Mm -hmm. Some of the greatest artists or how, much in money they or how much money they have. Some of the greatest artists in human history weren't celebrated until they were long gone. So in their day, no one was really paying close attention to them. This is one of those jewels, like many artists out there that the world doesn't even know exist. Van Gogh, Van Gogh he, never sold a painting while he was alive. Never sold a painting while he was alive. And I'm telling you, some of the greatest artists are living amongst us and nobody knows who they are. The greatest actors, the greatest writers, the greatest directors, the greatest singers and musicians have yet to be seen. Mm -hmm. And that, I'm so glad we were able to pick this one up and that's why I want big OTT platforms and as many of you as possible to share this with people because this is this is in my top favorite films of all time I'm at, I've added it to my list as far as absolutely as good as it gets in movie making and her performance yeah. I haven't been as impressed by an actress who I hadn't really seen before the last time I saw somebody and went holy crap where did she come from and give an Oscar performance was uh, uh, Brie um, Larson? No uh, from the Florida Project. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. She'd never done a thing, and it was like she Oscar level work. Even more so, this mm -hmm. beautiful, subtle, gorgeous. This is our, I believe, fourteenth or fifteenth Malayalam film, actually. So let us know what the next Malayalam film that we should watch. Malayalam always pushing the boundaries. I feel, uh, doing great, great work. And this director, this, this director. Let us know more from them and the next Malayalam film we should watch down below. Yeah.